Data Flow Diagrams Visualizing Information Flow Data flow diagrams provide a visual representation of information flow through a process or system. DFDs can be used in conjunction with process and data modeling techniques to address complex information flow. In this video, we have two objectives. The first is to address how to develop and build out DFDs in their associated levels, and the second is to examine the two categories of DFDs. Let's first examine the common notation types you'll encounter when constructing a DFD. The two primary notations are the Jordan encode or DeMarco notation and the Gain and Sarsen notation. Visually, the primary differences can be seen in how processes and data stores are represented. The Jordan DeMarco notation depict a process as a circle and the Gain and Sarsen as a rounded rectangle. The data store is represented as two parallel horizontal lines in the Jordan DeMarco notation and as an open-ended rectangle with a vertical line in the Gain and Sarsen notation. Alternatively, you will see data stores as an open-ended rectangle with the Jordan DeMarco notation depending upon the tool being used. However, regardless of the specific notation used, the four components have the same semantic meaning. Let's explore how each of these components are used in constructing a DFD. We'll be using the GAN and Sarsen notation going forward. First, let's start with the external entities. An external entity can represent a human, system, or subsystem, also known as actors, sources, or sinks, and terminators. External entities produce and consume data that flows between the entity and the system being diagrammed. These external entities provide the data flows that are the inputs and outputs of the DFD. Since they are external to the system being analyzed, these entities are typically placed at the boundaries of the diagram. Next, let's examine the data flows. Data flows represent the movement of data between external entities, processes, and or data stores and are represented with a solid line with an arrow representing the direction of flow. Data flows must be labeled and make explicit the types of data that is being flowed. Data labels must be nouns. The third element is the process. A process is an activity that changes or transforms data flows. Since they transform incoming data to outgoing data, all processes must have inputs and outputs on a DFD. This symbol is given a simple name based on its function, such as ship order, rather than being labeled process on a diagram. In Gain-Sarsen notation, a rectangular box is used and may be labeled with a reference number location of where in the system the process occurs and a short title that describes its function. Before we proceed, there are a couple of important concepts to be explained. First, when examining the current diagram, we should notice that a system boundary has been established as noted in the green box. The elements within the box are a part of the system in design or analysis. The elements outside of the box, specifically the external entities, provide the context for the system in design's operation. The second concept to be explained is that a data flow diagram is intended to provide more detail by using a set of DFDs to progressively iterate to the necessary or desired level of detail. DFD levels can be numbered 0, 1, or 2 and occasionally even go to level 3 or beyond. The necessary level of detail depends on the scope of what you're trying to accomplish. The diagram depicted here is very high level and sets the boundaries for the system or process and design are being analyzed. This is known as a context diagram. It is a basic overview of the system or process being modeled or analyzed. It should be noted that the context diagram should only contain external entities and a single process symbol in addition to the related data flows. Next, we will progressively iterate from the context diagram to level zero. As we examine the level zero diagram, we notice the introduction of the final element in the DFD notation, the data store. The data store does not generate any operations, but simply holds data for later access. Data stores could consist of files held for long term or a batch of documents stored briefly while they wait to be processed. Input flows to a data store include information or operations that change the stored data. Output flows from a data store would be data retrieved from the store itself. The Level 0 DFD provides a more detailed decomposition of the context level diagram. You may see where tools and guidance will refer to the context diagram as Level 0, 
but we've built our instruction upon DeMarco's structured analysis and system specification guidance. Regardless of the title, there is a specific input transformation output pattern that must exist in order for the DFD to show the flow of information. In our example, for instance, we see that the reservation request is an input to process 1.0 check availability and is transformed into an output availability confirmation. The inputs and outputs are nouns. The process is a verb noun statement. Furthermore, we see the room inventory data store provides an additional output flow of room availability, which is also an input to the process. We can also see in process 3.0, confirm room selection, there are two outputs. Room selection confirmation is an input to the process 4.0, while the other output, room availability update, is an input flow to the room inventory data store and serves to reflect a change to the data in that store. Based upon the circumstances, there may be a need for additional detail for one or all of the level zero processes. The need for more granular data detail should drive this need so as not to misuse this as simply another process diagram. The second objective of this presentation is to examine the two categories of DFD, logical versus physical. A logical DFD focuses on the business and business related information flows between business activities. A physical DFD looks at how a system is implemented. Logical DFDs identify what needs to happen from a business perspective, while the physical DFD focuses on the how it will happen from an information system perspective. If we re-examine our earlier example, we can see that it is focused on what needs to happen with regards to information flow as a part of reserve hotel room. Conversely, we show a supporting physical DFD context diagram below it. Notice that the concept of guest has not changed, but the process at the context level is now identifying a system, and in this case it is the hotel reservation system. The hotel entity is now the local hotel reservation system, and a third external entity has been introduced, the credit card payment gateway. Notice that the information flows are focused on record and information related exchanges. The rules for developing a physical DFD are no different than a logical DFD. Instead, it is a matter of maintaining the appropriate perspective. We hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel.